everybody kind of quiet today? Just me? <laughs> we got a bunch of people out traveling, different reasons. Um, looks like a lot of people disappeared with the kids. Um, I just sent a link on the Messenger app to what I'm about to read. Um, I knew we were going to pray over Emily and um, and we had the baby shower after church, so I wanted it to be relatively brief, so it's easier for me to write something and stick to the plan. If you're an audible learner, I'm going to read it to you. If not, um, you can read along. Uh, this is just a story. Um, it's multifaceted of uh, multi faceted in what I'm hoping to accomplish by sharing this story, but I felt to just share uh, something that happened this week. Um, a couple weeks ago when we all went to Luray as a church, on our way home from Luray, uh, we stopped off at the bank that held the loan on my truck and um, we were able to pay it off. Um, then last Sunday, on the way home from church, the dreaded ch uh, check engine light came on in my, in my truck. Immediately I pulled over and checked the basics, oil, water, etc. I decided it was safe to make it home. I knew it could be something simple, but as always, your mind races to worst case scenario. I quickly began to doubt the wisdom and paying off the truck. I mean, what if I needed the cash for major repairs? As the financial leader of my household, I take these decisions very seriously. But before the seeds of doubt could grow roots, the gentle voice of the Lord said it would be okay. I let that wash over my soul and suddenly I was back at peace in my life. I don't know if it was the enemy or my own bad habits. They kept saying, yeah, but what if it's, <laughs> but the resolution to trust Jesus's word that it would be okay quickly crucified those contrary thoughts. Normally I would go straight to my shop and start running codes and ordering parts because that truck is our main mode of transportation. But the Lord has had assured me, um, so I just didn't worry about it. The next day, though, I thought about it a few times, but it didn't feel didn't feel to get into it. Tuesday morning when I woke up, I felt the Lord prompted me to work on it immediately, which is odd because I usually dedicate my morning to the word and prayer, but I have learned over the years to respond to those leadings without guilt. Sidebar, if it's something every day pops up that would take you away from the word and not him, it's probably not him leading you. Yeah. Praise the Lord, I found the problem and fixed it with no cost and no major time investment. The moral of that first part of that story is don't squander your peace. Amen. Don't waste the peace of the Lord that God's given you over things that are out of your control. It's going to work out one way or another. Yeah. Amen? However, the code indicated multiple problems, and I only found one, so I went for a test drive to see how it was doing. As soon as I started driving, I felt the Lord was leading me to a place called Thrasher's Lake. I said to the Lord, is that really you? I don't want to intrude on Suzanne's, that's Mark's wife, Suzanne Millhouse's uh, morning routine. I know she walks her dog there every morning. But the nudge got stronger and stronger. When I arrived, I felt to pull into the first playground entrance, which is odd when I don't have my kids with me. As I'm standing in that parking lot, I noticed a huge turtle next to me. After a few minutes of talking to the Lord, I noticed the turtle wasn't going anywhere. And that was very odd since they don't typically hang out in parking lots completely exposed. Upon further investigation, I figured out it was stuck. Like it got in a pothole and its front legs couldn't touch and its back legs were slipping. So I helped it out of the hole and it ran off. We encountered lots of nature and this was yet another fun little interaction. I then began walking towards the lake and wondering what exactly the Lord had led me there for. Meaning, sometimes it's to meet people, and other times it's just to sit in his presence. The Lord began to speak clearly. <laughs> Lord, Lord said, I brought you here for the turtle. And I said, like to see a turtle? And the Lord said, no, to save the turtle. <laughs> and then the Lord, I kind of thinking about that for a minute, the Lord spoke again. He said, I care about the one. If you are with me, I will send you to be my hands and feet. Most people will not care nor be impressed with saving the one. But if being with me is enough for you, you will be happy. I will be with you in this journey. I knew in that moment God was not simply speaking to me, but to all who would partner with him in this capacity. Uh, side note, it's not about turtles. It's about doing whatever he wants you to do. Yeah. <laughs> 
In my spirit, I felt refreshed. I felt myself reorienting back into what he made me for, back to a singular focus on being in his presence and sharing his love that he poured out on me to the world around me. I knew yet again that I could be content spending the rest of my life walking with God in a manner that few would appreciate or even desire to join. In that end, I was at peace again. Matthew 18, 12 through 14. We studied Matthew 18 as a whole chapter recently, just as one section. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountain to seek the one that is strained? And if he should find it, assuredly, I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the ninety-nine <clears throat> that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father uh, who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. We said recently that we have to be quite okay with being the ninety-nine, that he's not quite going after and celebrating when, they, when he finds them. Because the, the joy is not being the lost sheep found. The joy is being the sheep that's being where you're supposed to be. Yeah. But if you want to be in the joy of the shepherd, you got to follow him to find the one. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Second moral of the story. To be in the right place at the right time, you have to let the Lord set your priorities and time them. Yeah, <clears throat> that turtle probably wasn't stuck the day before. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Third moral, the Bible is full of stories about two types of followers, the masses that walked right on the edge of what was acceptable and grumbled a lot, and those who lived with a passion to be in his ways, to do his work, those who would sit on a mountain alone and wait for God to show up. While I love all of his children, I want to be in the tribe that has a singular focus and the wild joy to wait for him. We have talked a lot about the peace of the Lord, and we have seen that his kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. But what does it take to enter the kingdom at hand? What does it take to see the realization of that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven? What would a life look like if we truly died to self and Christ was faithful to partake in the resurrection of a new creation? I think it looks... A lot like we are we are all the things the Bible tells us we are and we are no longer the things that we were I think it means we can love one another with a reckless abandonment we can dare to believe the best in everyone if they do offend us we can simply choose to not be offended that's the difference between uh, an offense happening and being offended, being becoming defined by your offense. Meaning people are going to unknowingly step on your toes for the rest of your life. And you have to decide to walk in the grace of Jesus and forgive as you, as you have been forgiven. If you remain in your soulish selfishness, the world around you will always disappoint but the transformative nature of the blood of Jesus that will flow through you will set you free from all of that after you partner with him in, in the life he has instructed us to live, the selfless life he's instructed us to live. <clears throat> I know for myself, especially lately, after 40 years of life, after working at every area of life and accomplishing a lot in most of them, I can tell you this. I do not sit around being fulfilled by the things that I have bought, but the relationships that I've had. The friends I have made, the experiences I've had with those friends, the people we have walked with in their journey. We have people who we have loved and supported for years now, and you may, you might not ever see them in here. They too are breaking family chains and feeling worthy and feeling worthy to join us. A lovely spiritual family like this takes quite a while for some, but loving them over time has been our pure joy. We push some of you in here very hard, but that is only because we know you are stronger than you may think you are. We know the secret of what lies within. It's a seed of the kingdom, the size of a mustard seed, and it's meant to be a mighty tree with large branches for the birds to rest on. It's a pearl of great wealth, a treasure hidden in a field. And I think we are close to switching gears as a ministry and are about to be asked to love the world around us as we were loved by Jesus. And I don't want you to miss a minute of it. 
there is an excitement stirring around this next step for day spring that is supernatural this next step for those of you who are just joining us meaning john um, we are in in the in a season of transition where we have been praying into and looking for a new location we're very close to sorting out all those details with the church on rivermont um, the further we go into sorting out those details the more excited i get because of it's a lot of things coming to um coming to fulfillment that the lord has spoken to me it puts us back into a community where we have uh, new people to meet new people to bless new people to love it's very exciting um, this season we've been in uh, we've pushed hard and i don't know that people i know that a lot of people sometimes struggle to believe that the things we push and we say are from the lord are in fact um, the Lord, but I assure you, his instructions were for us to love one another within this group and do picnics. Yeah. Now, I know everybody didn't receive the picnic thing as a word of God, but I assure you, I take saying that is from God extremely serious, yeah. maybe more serious than anyone I've ever known, especially when it's something not, you know, not quite as biblically common as picnicking. The idea, I think, was that the Lord was trying to um, train us like soldiers for Jesus. But this was like boot camp training, where you're really just training with other soldiers on the same side. Yeah? yeah? When you go out and you start meeting the lost, the broken, the wounded, the hurt, it is the joy of the Lord. You will be standing in between him and them, and it is beautiful. But if there is anything left in your solar side that wants to be offended, they will find that button every time. Not being offended is the greatest byproduct of knowing Jesus. The ability to love one another, to have mercy for one another, to forgive one another, to not walk in the stumbling block of offenses, to not let it define you. This is the joy. Well... It is a byproduct of the joy of the Lord. Yes? Yeah. And it doesn't matter which demographic you're loving on. It doesn't matter if it's a younger, older, lower class, upper class. It does not matter. Until people come to that super personal, intimate walk with Jesus where they truly look in a mirror and see him clearly face to face, as Paul said. Until that day comes, they will continually offend you. Furthermore, until that day comes for you, you will continue to offend everyone around you. That's why we can choose to forgive one another because we're all doing it. We're all offending one another most of the time completely unknowingly. So the secret to life that I have found in my journey was to let the Lord establish people's value around you, not how they treated you. Because they're doing their best to love you. They're doing their best to be the version of themselves that God has created them to be. But they sometimes are in process like most of us are. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Not as quite as exciting as I thought this would be. But no, it's um, it's, I just want to encourage everybody. We are very close to a, to a very exciting season. A very exciting step. Um, the next, this building we're talking to. It is um, really good setup for us. There's a kitchen right built on to the room we're going to be in. There's children's rooms with tiny toilets. There's a parking lot yeah. with a plate with a field big enough to play kickball in and windows, and windows light uh, place. We're gonna we're gonna do some grilling out. We're gonna we're just gonna hunker in and do family fun stuff. It's gonna be great. Um, we're in this transition season, working through their governmental ladder. Um, and we're going, it's going to go as fast as it can go. And we're going to be there hopefully in a few weeks. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. So the situation we're in now with the lack of kids' rooms, it's hard. Bear with us. Don't lose steam. Yeah. I know everybody, I can see it. Everybody is losing steam quickly. <laughs> Hold on tight. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there soon. Still chugging. Still chugging. chugging. <laughs> the little train that could. Chugga, 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 chugga. It's all good, and just be excited. Yeah. When I, some of the people, when we, 
when we take account of the people from our past, our life, some of the people we've seen come from extreme brokenness that we, as we said, we don't see them all the time. I don't want to pretend like we're in contact with them five days a week. Most of them at this point are on their own two feet and they're living their lives. And we check on them from time to time and just get updates and then keep encouraging them when we can, how we can. It is the joy of the Lord to lay your life down for someone else. Jesus said, we read it last week, there is no greater love than to lay one's life down for another. And if you want to be in the love of God, you have to be the love of God. You have to love one another as he loved us. He found all of them in a very broken state, a very not so pleasant state. Some of them were arrogant and cocky. Some of them were prostitutes. Some of them were demon possessed. It didn't matter how he found them. He loved them into their salvation. Yes. 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 And that is the joy. Yes. That is being with the good shepherd when he goes for the one. It's why evangelists, the true full throttle evangelists tend to not even have a church to go to. They get so hooked on being in the outpouring of the Lord that they just, they find more comfort being amongst the lost as he pours out on the lost. Yeah. But I don't believe that's the perfect plan. I believe the perfect plan, which is what we're doing, mm -hmm. continue to steward a body of faithful, mature, healthy, unoffendable believers. So that, I call it, the analogy I've been using in my heart is it's a landing strip. It's a landing strip where um, these new converts that come, as they're, as they're accepting um, this love, this family spiritual love to the best of their ability, it's got to be a healthy landing strip for them. Yeah. It's got to be a landing strip that there's a real obvious context for what to do next. Meaning, a lot of this, I'm not making all this up as I go. I'm, I'm pulling it from experience. From, I've shared with many of you the testimony of the, the church structure where I got saved at. It was little to no church structure, but it was a very strong fam, familiar culture mm -hmm. uh, where all these families were just knit together. They had one thought. What do we do as a church family? Like, and we cooked out, we cut grass, we fixed garages, they hunted deer. They, it, you know, we did stuff together. And I grafted in as a very extremely lost, broken, battered human being. And I didn't even, I just kept my mouth shut. I just kept my mouth shut and watched the people around me do what mature Christians do. And I learned to be a Christian man. It wasn't the great sermons. It's why I put, uh, I, I put a lot of effort into the things I share. I, I truly do. But I don't think that's going to ultimately change everyone's life <laughs> as much as a cookout with godly people. Yeah. A cookout where someone who's only seen de drunk dad beat wife, beat, beat mom, they get to come to a cookout and see a loving man love his wife. Yeah. They get to be recalibrated to the ways of God. Mm -hmm. They get to see what it means to be to experience generosity, kindness, love, to be to come in and be misdressed talk inappropriately, to, to have misbehaved children, and just be loved. Not We don't want to um, become that broken culture, but we need to be able to absorb it and transform it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. For those who were um, foreknown by God, John 1, he's the light that was in every man that comes into the world. He's the light that's in every man that comes in the world, and those who would believe would be given the right to become his children. For those who were foreknown by God, it already told us it's in every man. He foreknows every man by putting a spirit in them. Every person who you ever meet has something inside of them that comes from your daddy. Amen? And we get to love them, just like the song said. We called, he answered. He came to our rescue, and now we want to be where he is. He is going after the one. And we will go after the one. And I got good news. It's not that hard. We're going to cook out and have fun doing it. Yes. Yeah? Jesus. But I have struggled, I think, thus far to convince everybody that the instructions the Lord gave me to knit us together as a group that picnics and plays kickball together. I don't know that everyone fully believes 
that that is his plan for us. It's not just that he wants us to cook out and play kickball. It's that that is an easy way for him to graft people into us. Yep. And it's not about growing a church. We might do Wednesday night cookouts and have Wednesday night kickball with the community. And I don't care if they never come to church. If they can slowly and surely be entrenched, at least have one night a week where these kids or these young adults or whoever come, where they get um, recalibrated to what it looks like to be around godly people living godly lives. Sometimes that's the best you can do. Getting them to, to dress up and come to church, sometimes that takes time. Yes? Amen. Amen. It's a fun plan. Yeah. And I assure you, it's from the Lord. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. It, little things. Amanda's baby shower. It's going to be good. God's going to be in that room over there. The women are going to have fun. And, and, and I know that uh, in the, in some people are just traveling. Some people had family emergencies come up and they had to leave town suddenly and, and that just that stuff happens we have grace and tolerance for that I just want to encourage everybody the reason why Kirsten has so many women in her life who who feel intimately connected to her is that she would go to baby showers with zeal to women she doesn't even hardly know <laughs> where's Rachel at Where, Rachel wasn't here she's in the hallway hold on one real quick Rachel Barely knew Kirsten. Didn't know Katie on any level. Mm -hmm. Kirsten volunteered to do the flowers for her wedding. They took a, a, a air conditioner and put it in my bathroom window and turned it into a walk-in cooler and dedicated a week of their lives and my bathroom for a week <laughs> to doing a professional grade flower arrangement for a wedding for a person they didn't even know. And now we're all BFFs. <laughs> <laughs> She massaged the legs of a, of a wailing pregnant woman. <laughs> so, I was just going to say, the first time I really spent any amount of time like, outside of church service with Kristen was at your baby shower. And she was the crazy lady just being the most competitive but lovable person. Like, just like, if you could describe two words to describe Kristen, it would be love and competition. <laughs> we're gamers, what can we say? I'm like, I came up like, feel, and you were like, I was like, hmm. <laughs> Amen. Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this next step, Lord. We continue to lift up the hearts of the people who are involved in the decision-making process, the committees, and we just ask, Lord Jesus, that even as we've gotten into this process, we've had other possible locations and opportunities pop up but my heart is completely turned towards this this building this avenue and i just lord jesus i just speak that that is your voice that is your leading in our life we ask you lord to continue to open those doors and iron out those details and just minister to our hearts lord minister to our hearts lord that to serve you to, to radically dedicate and serve our, serve you with our entire lives. It doesn't always have to look awful. Sometimes it can just look healthy. Let us celebrate being in a healthy life as a mission field. Let us be the light into the darkness. Let us be um, the city set on a hill, the salt in the earth. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name, Lord, today we pray. Again, we bless the offerings and tithes and sacrifices. We, we ask for wisdom, Lord. We ask for wisdom on how to use this to glorify your kingdom. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. And we bless the baby shower.